Hello guys, once again I am benchmarking my reliable Intel X58 platform. My last three articles featured the AMD Radeon RX Vega 64 and the NVIDIA RTX 3080. In the previous RTX 3080 review, I included the GPU usage to show how much of the GPU was being utilized. This video will give more information regarding the CPU bottleneck using my 6 core 12 thread X5660 clocked at 4.6 GHz. I will also include my Intel X58 PCIe 2.0 results against modern computers, such as the AMD Ryzen series and Intel 9th and 10th generation CPUs. This chart was also used in my previous X58 and RTX 3080 review, but I still show it here just for anybody that might have missed it. The charts in this article would typically start around the 50% area. The main focus for a flagship GPU like the RTX 3080 is mostly the higher resolution such as 1440p and 4K. I did run several 1080p results as well. 1440p has always been the sweet spot and we will see how well the X58 handles their resolution. My specifications are basically the same as they were in my RTX 3080 review. I also rode back the RTX 3080 GeForce drivers to 461.09 so that the information in this video can be compared to my RTX 3080 review. My CPU is still overclocked at 4.6. The DRAM is still running at 1600 megahertz with the same timings. So everything is pretty much the same as it was before. That way we can have a direct comparison with my other RTX 3080 review. Doom Eternal leverages async compute, which is now supported by Nvidia and would definitely ensure that the CPU was being utilized properly and that the GPU won't be starved for data. We can see an average of 84% at 1080p across my 12 threads. At 1440p, we see an average of 79% and 4K shows 63%. Obviously lower is better in these situations. The higher resolutions typically show lower CPU utilization and bottlenecking in most cases. In Apex Legends, the average was 78% with the minimum being only 38%. I only ran Apex at 4K. As we can see, the Apex CPU threads hit a maximum of 100% and every game I tested hit 100%. But that doesn't tell the entire story. Hitting 100% a few times won't be a big issue, but constantly hitting the ceiling can cause performance issues. Certain events in a game would definitely push the X5660 12 threads to the max, Luckily, Apex Legends isn't constantly hitting 100%, but it is knocking on the ceiling at 78% on average. Shortly, we will see a few games that are nearly 100% bottlenecked at higher resolutions. Taking a quick look at control using ray tracing, we can see that the 4K shows a CPU thread average of 64%. The chart shows that my CPU only hit 100% once. That is expected since this game is heavily GPU bottlenecked. 1440p shows an average of 70%. The game has some frame pacing and micro stutter issues, and I suggest using my control 4K optimization guide in my RTX 3080 review to resolve those issues. DMC5 uses the awesome RE engine, which is also used in Resident Evil 2. This is one of the few games that brings the X58 platform to its knees. Yet the X58 and the X5660 still pumps out as many frames as possible. 1440p brings 148 frames per second on average, while 4K pumps out 139 frames on average. Looking at the 1440p results, we can see a whopping average of 95% for the CPU thread usage, pushing the X5660 to its limits. Typically, we will see the CPU thread utilization drop quite a bit when the GPU becomes more of a bottleneck, but not in DMC5. At 4K, the CPU utilization is still hitting 92%. Unlike the previous games we have seen so far, you would definitely be hitting 100% a lot in this title. However, you would not notice any performance issues. The gaming experience would be top notch and should not be affected due to the high frames. So while we are hitting a 100% ceiling, you have nothing to worry about in this game as far as performance goes. Shadow of the Tomb Raider is another title that is well programmed and takes advantage of async compute. 1080p averages 77% while 1440p shows 69% and 4K only hits 53% on average. Lower resolutions definitely reveal some bottlenecking issues. 
Tomb Raider performs very well and just as good as any modern PC in 2021 at the 4K resolution. Resident Evil 2 runs on the RE engine and it runs great. Earlier we saw this engine push the 12 thread X5660 near its max performance in Devil May Cry 5. Resident Evil 2 uses an older version of the RE engine but it still runs great on the X58 platform. 1440p pushes the X5660 to 80% on average and 4K lowers that average to only 67%. However, there is still a slight CPU bottleneck at 4K so what you see is what you get in this game at 4K. With the lower average at 4K, overclocking the GPU won't necessarily bring more frames due to the X5660 being pushed hard with the RE engine. Here is a complete list of the games that I have tested with the RTX 3080 with my X5660 CPU. This chart contains the average, minimum, and maximum CPU utilization across 12 threads. The main focus was 4K and 1440p. You can see that the CPU utilization gets better as the bottleneck issues are pushed towards the GPU. Focusing on the 4K performance, we can see that the X58 still has plenty of performance left depending on the game engine. Even with the legacy PCIe 2.0 slots, we see at 4K, the X58 platform can handle this GPU with ease. Going above 4K should not be a problem, but I will be testing this in the future as more powerful GPUs are released. Lower resolutions perform fine, but they would stretch the CPU and hit a hard bottleneck. This bottleneck would not be noticeable outside of benchmark charts from my experience. This chart shows the X58 platform versus modern machines running the RTX 3080. As you can see, the numbers stack up quite nicely when it comes to actual games. There's barely any difference and it comes out to around half a percent. The focus for the RTX 3080 for me was the 4K, so I chose to show the 4K performance. So basically, you can see the performance is on par with any of the modern systems. There is not a huge difference when it comes to actual gaming. Be sure to check the article for more information. Over the years, I have shown how viable the X58 platform can be. I'm still amazed at how well the X58 platform handles certain workloads I throw at it. Intel definitely did a great job with this architecture many years ago. Currently, I am still gaming with no problems on the platform. We really shouldn't focus too much on the minimum percentage because that's normally doing loading screens and very light workloads. The average is what matters the most and the max also means a lot depending on how many times the CPU becomes bottlenecked. These performance issues would not be noticeable outside of benchmarking charts. When you are actually playing the games, you would not notice performance bottlenecking issues such as micro stutters and so on. Although this is an in-depth look at the data, the gameplay was top notch regardless of the bottlenecking issues we faced at lower resolutions. So now we have reached the end of my video. If you enjoyed the video and want to see more content, please consider donating by clicking the Patreon or PayPal link below this video. Feel free to leave a comment below and let me know what you guys think as well. Thanks for watching.